This is Jason Verney's podcast. I am Jason Verney. Uh, The sound in the background is the sound of Leicester Square. As I'm doing one of these podcasts, podcasts on the go, podcasts on the fly, if you like. Um, Following a screening um, of a Japanese documentary at the Prince Charles Cinema. Um, So I wanted to do this on the go before I forget to do it or forget details. And as you may know, I do some of these podcasts on the move or outside rather than the recording room, just to give it a bit more realism, naturalism, or simply for convenience. So, yes, um, so I woke up... uh, sort of groggy, uh, grouchy and grumpy, um, I suppose you could say. And I wasn't really in the mood or even in the get up and go to mood to zone to get to get up and go to this uh, free screening. It was called Oyster Factory. Um, it looked like it was an almost three hour film documentary. And uh, I guess it was over two and a half hours and there was an introduction about the film um, what, what, one thing I should mention this is a, a two weekend free, free film festival or a free film sort of season by the Japan Foundation in London there's two screenings today at the Prince Charles Cinema one of them is already sold out the one that's about to begin I believe uh, just caught a friend in the queue actually and the other three are next Saturday, in a in a in a row in in, in uh, cons- uh, consecutive order or whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, as I say, I was feeling a bit grog- groggy today. Um, perhaps health issues or just general sleep deprivation. And um, yeah, the three next week are actually uh, BAFTA. They're all free to book. However, uh, even the one today was the second one was sold out a few days ago and i'm not sure which ones are available for next week or i would probably think that the size of the auditorium or the seats in bafta which i've been to before are um you know it's a larger size room screening room so i suppose um there could still be seats left it says you can only book one at a time Sorry, you can only book one on each day, but I, I'm sure there might be ways of uh, booking two of the three films or three. Uh, or perhaps, as I say, they've all, all fully booked. Uh, there is a waiting list option. Uh, but anyway, this film, um, as, as uh, mentioned at the start by the intro, the woman in the intro, uh, I forget her name, she works for Japan Foundation. I've seen her before, actually. Um, but this, this film was an ob- observational film. And it even says that in the kind of titles, it's the director's sixth observational film. And it's, but it's more about the human kind of people's lives. And she, she mentions that at the beginning of the film. Um, so yeah, it was, um, it was basically a really good, really good film actually. To start, as I say, my mood wasn't really giving me an incentive to watch it. And it was a very slow start, observational. It obviously wasn't going to be grabbing me at the beginning I'm going to move to a slightly quieter place I knew this was going to happen but I'm now walking down to um, actually I'm walking down to the Sewol to see the guys at the Sewol monthly protest the Sewol or the ferry that um, capsized or sunk with uh, almost 300 people who lost their lives three years ago uh, which I've mentioned before in podcasts apologies for mentioning so much I guess if you had not wanted to hear that um, so I, the, the film the, the, the film today was it was yeah a slow start but it was that's the kind of film it was going to be I like the way it moved from uh, one particular thing I liked was the, the kind of negative there's a bit of negative speak at the beginning regarding migrant workers uh, especially from China from Vietnam and I like the way that later on this kind of they, it, it, it warms you to the to the new the new Chinese workers that that come on board. You're thinking to yourself, at this oyster factory or oyster shipping area. You're thinking that whether they, uh, 
there's even there's even a shot a shot of this guy's face and you think to yourself is he going to be the same is he going to leave the job like another Chinese person did they mentioned and um you know and it kind of it almost turns you don't I don't I don't know what you I don't know what happens after the film was made but he, he actually t- looks like he was warming to the job and um you know certain um aspects of it so it does it deliberately I suppose it's a thought provoking film um I'm going to do a part two of this because there's there's probably too much more I want to mention in the short time I have I'm at near the National Gallery now and I'm going to do a a second part uh, later on so I'll leave it at that okay adios